Hello there, and this is Daytime Today. I'm James Law Jr. Uh, sometimes we have to do these shows, hey, come on, talk about sad and somber things that happen in our industry. Um, and we've had a couple of things happen uh, just in the last week and one today uh, that happened that everyone's talking about. And I've been here in Kansas City, Missouri, last couple of days uh, on vacation, but I actually... I'm a little sick today. I ate something that didn't agree with me, and I've been sick all morning. But I am doing better right now, so I'm kind of going with it. I'm like, okay, I'm doing good right now, so we're going to go with it. Uh, I've been getting so many messages, people wanting to know uh, my thoughts and, you know, JLJ Media's thoughts about what's going on with the last couple of pieces of news. So I'm here just to kind of talk to you and share something with you also at the same time. You're going to read, everyone's coming out. With the news, I woke up with it this morning, that Billy Miller, three-time winner Billy Miller, has passed away, 43 years old. And I'm seeing everybody reporting on it, of course. Well, you know what I do is I don't report on stuff. I kind of, I talk about feelings. Um, that's the thing that I do on this show, this channel. We talk about feelings and reactions. Uh, first reaction, just shocked. Like, wow, okay, that was a big shock. And 43 years old, so sad. Um, I want to look around to see kind of what was going on in a full story. Um, at this time, as I'm releasing this, there hasn't been much about how he died. But it's funny, I don't usually go straight there um, when someone dies, and someone will do. I'm more like, wow, they died. I'm usually like, I'm just kind of like feeling what that must mean for their friends and family, who care about them. Their colleagues, former colleagues, I got to sneeze and it won't come out. Ooh, well, I, I've been fine on one, I got to sneeze. Okay. Um, and I figure it's going to come out however they pass, it'll come out at some point. Uh, but I had a friend say something to me. And and I and I first I was like, hmm. I'm seeing the outpouring of support, and people are upset and everything. And I said, yes, that makes sense. He was a beloved character in the soap world. He's done other things too, but in the soap world, he, he was on All My Children. He was on Wonderful as Billy on Young and the Restless, and he was on General Hospital. So that's a long time. And I, I had a friend go, wow, well, how are you guys upset? Like, I mean, it's okay. It's it's He he understood being sad someone dies. Like, that's you know, inhuman not to know that, but he understands that part. Because there are people who are crying and upset they've never met him. What is that about? And it's always something that always comes up. And I and I, I gave him two things. I said, one, I remember when online just start, first started, I used to say, and I was supposed to say it, you can't make any real friends online. You can't make it, it's, it's, it's an illusion. You're online. But you can. I've since completely did a 180 on that. It's like pen pals. I used to have pen pals growing up. Like you, know, you can still become close to someone and get used to someone and care about someone, even if you've never met them personally. Just the one. So I kind of go, that's me. It's just it, you can. You grow to you grow to care about this singer or songwriter or actor or actress or producer or writer or, or sports person. You you I mean, I remember when Kobe passed, um, I saw grown men cry that I'd never seen cry before. Grown men who I'd never seen cry. Huge fans of his, huge fan of basketball, sobbing at his death. And but I said, I get, I get it. They represent something. You care about them. They're part of your lives. Um, and with Soap World, especially, probably similar to sports, every day, five days a week, almost 50 weeks a year, 40 weeks a year, there is soap opera. Billy Miller was on your screens. No matter what show he was on, you your screens. Um, and you get used to them. You get used to him. And there's always that hope. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he'll come back to his soap. Maybe he'll come back to one of the other soaps. Maybe he'll come back to his old character. Like, there's always hope and promise when they're still alive. But also, you just really like them. Now, there are folks who have met him and are sharing their stories. I've never met him in person. People were asking me that. I've never met him. Um, I've said hi to him in passing at an Emmys once, but I've never, I've never interviewed him. Never had my shows. Um, so I don't, I don't know him personally. 
but I am sad. And and again, 43 is just so, to me, it's so young, um, so full of promise. But I tell my friend also, you grow to care for these people who are in, they're, they're giving you something back. That art and entertainment is just as important as anything else. And just like sports, just like other things that give you life and give you feeling, you know, for some people, um, there's been times when soaps kind of saved my life, my emotional life, my physical life, um, that these actors are giving you something when they're on screen. So it's okay to mourn the loss of them and be upset. And my friend was like, he, he's, he's kind of starting to get a little bit what I was saying. It's okay to be like, that's because it, it's it. I mean, they're gone now. Now, fortunately, we have a whole legacy left behind by him of work. And I'm sure we're gonna see, I'm seeing people posting, which I love this the most. People are posting some favorite scenes of his from his shows. Love that. Seeing the pictures. He gave us work. He gave us every winning work um, on several shows. So I think that's, you know, so I, I just, I really feel bad for him, uh, for his family. And I'm not going to go to any speculation on what's going on. I'm going to sit back and wait and see how everything comes out. And because we'll never report on alleged stuff or kind of scam stuff on this show. We don't do that. We try to stick to the facts. And something else that was went on this week is John J. York. And I'm going to make sure, I want to make sure I get this correct. He did a video. And I've met John J. York, actually. I've met him. Very nice guy. Never interviewed him, but I've met him. He's dealing with some blood and bone marrow disorders it's um i can't even announce that my old even my old nursing days msd multiple smoldering myeloma two blood and bone marrow disorders and uh which basically is a group of cancers in which immature blood cells to the bone marrow do not mature and become healthy blood cells so he is looking for some help, and you go. You can see the video, John J. York, anywhere. You can see his video, and the so I sent him love and light for that, and all of the outpouring of his colleagues, past and present, wonderful. And I've never heard. Anything, I never. I've never heard a bad thing about John J. York in a business all these years. Never. So I think I just feel like he probably is one of the nicest guys in this. But when I saw him, he was very nice. I met him, he was very nice. So I've sent him love and light with that too, because that that is just. <sighs> And that's one of the reasons why I've been really taking care of my health. And today I feel like crap, but um, but I've been the last two months, almost two months, yeah, almost two months now, I have been losing weight and taking care of my health and taking care of business because just you never know. And things can happen to you whether you're whether you're healthy or not, but at least if you give it a fighting chance and be partially healthy as you can be, then that will help. So but John J. York, we give I send Love and light to you too, and all of that. And um, there are always people always looking for blood donors and bone marrow donors and, and organ donors and all that stuff. So just keep that in mind. And they lifted the ban of uh, gay people giving gay men giving blood, especially. So you can so you take that whatever you or that also. Uh, but there are folks who need it, and so. Um, but it's another shocking thing where you're like, wow, this guy we've watched for decades on General Hospital is now going through this. Um, and he's taking it to the public to let him know he's going on a brief hiatus. So much love to him. Um, one of the members of 702 passed away also. I was thinking out to her family and to them too. I just, it's just, it's... You know, life life has death in it. And as I know, nine months since my stepfather died and seven months since my mother almost died and two months since my other aunt almost died, I, I'm, I see how fragile life is. We literally hear one moment and go on the next. And that's just how it works. Uh, we're not getting out alive. We're all getting out alive. But I just want to tell people it's okay to remember somebody, to mourn their loss, to be upset. But also, as we try, and we say, everybody says all the time, I try to do it myself, is give people their flowers while they're here. That's another thing, too, we have to try to do and celebrate them. And uh, that's why I do these, you know, mini spotlights and things on my shows. 
like I just spotlight people and spotlight their work and spotlight what they've done and give them shout outs and you know retweet their stuff and if they're doing something positive support the positivity uh if they're going through something send them compassion I think we need to we, we're in a world that's very jaded these days and I, there's times I'm jaded to you I am sometimes but I'm trying to learn how to walk more in compassionate concern for everybody uh, another thing that's been going on, of course, right now, people are asking me about the Drew Barrymore situation. And now she's putting her, her show back on hiatus again after what happened. My only thing, you know, I have been very vocal and said she's a scab. I've been very vocal. Now, I've met Drew Barrymore, super nice person, everything. I've read comments where folks are like, she has to help her people. And there's people who need help and need to work. Well, everybody needs to work. I just think my my whole thing was don't join a union if you don't fully plan on being a part of the union. You can't be part of the union and then make up your own rules as you go along or how you feel. You have to stick with it um, if you're part of it. Then don't be a part of it if you don't want to do anything you really want. And I, my heart goes out to all my friends who aren't writers or actors who work in crews and are hair and makeup and who are not, we're also not working. And also check them out. If, if they have side projects going on or things going on right now, support them. That's what Steve's will come out. Um, they, they still have books coming out and they're doing they're doing hair in kitchens or whatever. Support them, pay them, do it. But I, I feel and you know, and, and Drew has been out a long time. She's been she's been this is a long time. And I have to believe that she knew somewhere the backlash she would get if she decided back to work during a strike. No matter how heartfelt she could have been, or something, I mean, I, her motives could have been totally pure, it doesn't matter, but there's, especially nowadays, optics and appearance are everything. And whatever we do, it just, it's, if you're like, ah, you get, you get watched and judged and you get canceled for it or not canceled or people. So I think, and right now it's tough because you can't have, any people who are SAG union actors on your shows unless they're promoting something non-work related. Because I can't have that either on my shows. So it's like it's it'll be like who you can have you can actually have singers on your show and reality stars and stuff. I guess you could, but there are writers for everything. And under and I just feel like I just feel like it undermines the whole system if only some people participate and some don't. And your name. Um, so now she's back on hiatus again. That's I think that's what today. So I, someone sent her love and light also, and just you know, and you know, maybe it's a learning experience. Maybe she was told she should do this. Maybe I don't know. Who knows? Again, her intentions could have been super pure by this. Um, I don't know her personally, um, but I just think it's it's a bad look. I think when you do that, um, it's like you have to stick with the group. If that's if that's your part of the group, I don't know, this is high flooding. I've been, I mean, trust me, there are things I want to do that I'm not doing because I'm sticking with my guns to this and trying to continue to support um, WGA and SAG after in their approach. And this is just, it's been going on for, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not good. This is not a good look. It's showing us that these streaming services and, and big companies and media just don't care. And I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it on my shows and shows for years. That doesn't care. That never really, people are looking at me like, no, James. I'm like, I'm trying to tell you, a lot of them do not care like that. They don't. Um I and this this could go on for a long time. I can see it ending soon. They see it go on for a long time. So I, who asked me when is this gonna end? I have there, I mean, it's it's not a great situation. Not a great situation at all. It's not. <sighs> so I just I keep praying for it to come to an end. Also, Hollywood's losing money. I'm losing money. We're losing money. They're losing money. And you guys are. And the the, the hardest part of all of this is you guys. Or not the hardest part, but just one of the most heartbreaking parts is you're losing on entertainment. You're losing on new art, new entertainment, new shows, new works new performances, you guys lose out because we can't get 
what we need to be paid efficiently and and the way it should. So I just feel, I feel bad for them. the audience. The audience ultimately loses out when companies had come together. And so it's 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 tough. So a lot of stuff going on in their chair these days. Um, and that's and I'll I'll just leave it there. But back to sending love and light to John J. York and his family, and saying love and light to um Billy Miller's family and friends, colleagues, um, management, everything. Um, again, a light snuffed out way too young. More to come, but we have his legacy of his work. And um, we should really focus on that. To everyone who's feeling something, you feel it. You continue feeling it. You do what you got to do. Um, it's, your feelings are valid. Um, when someone goes that we care about and on screen, that is valid. It is. It just is. I'm James Lott Jr. Talk to you next time.